Hello and welcome to the Cisco CyberOps Associate Lab video series. I'm going to be walking through each of the major labs of the Cisco CyberOps Associate NetAcad curriculum. So let's go and let's jump on in. Hello and welcome. So we're going to be working on lab 1717, exploring DNS traffic. What we're going to be doing is we have a eight page lab through NetAcad and it's all about capturing and exploring traffic using Wireshark. The three parts are capturing DNS traffic, exploring DNS queries, and then exploring DNS response based traffic. Step one is basically download and install Wireshark. We're going to capture and we're going to work through this lab. All right, so in our Windows machine, Go ahead and go to Google. There it goes. Open up or search for Wireshark. You go to Wireshark.org also. How you get there is not overly important, but get to Wireshark. Download the 64-bit version of Wireshark. Once you've downloaded it, go ahead and install it. So we're still working on step one, which is essentially install Wireshark. It's almost done. I'm gonna go ahead and open the file. Next. All the basics are fine. I'm going to include the desktop icon. Everything else, leave default. And we're good to go. What we're going to end up doing is once we have our Wireshark set up, we're going to clear our local DNS and then we're going to explore some, some options. All right. Set up in cap. We are almost done. The assumption is we are using a Windows based machine. So if you're using a Mac or Linux, the command may be slightly different. But to clear our DNS cache, we're going to be doing that through the web terminal. Almost done. All right, it's complete, we're good. Open up our command terminal. All right, from here, do an IP config, IP config, space forward slash flush DNS. That will clear the DNS. If uh, you need to do that for Linux, they're, they're, the command line guide gives you the different uh, system controls to clear DNS. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead, let's do an NS lookup. All right, so before we do that, the guide in a very small, small, small section has us start capturing our traffic. So I open up Wireshark and I have multiple connections and you'll see there's no data on any of them except on this ETH0. ETH0 is showing something more than a straight line. So that's the adapter I'm going to go ahead and capture. So I will go ahead and click on the little fin which is start capturing. Go back to my command terminal and let's look up www.cisco.com. And you'll notice it did do a DNS query. So after that, go ahead and stop the capture. That's our first part. The second part is all about being able to analyze it. 
So what we're going to do is I maximized our Wireshark from here. We want to go ahead and look at UDP based traffic or DNS based traffic or the protocol DNS. So it really just depends on how you want to do it. So I'm going to do UDP dot port and we know oh it's not typing that's always fun udp dot port and we know it's port 53 hit enter and that's going to go ahead and narrow our search results down to our query results and again we could have done this through the protocol dns or other ways so we want to select the DNS packet containing the standard query and an A record. So you'll notice here, this is a pointer record. This is a response. Here is the A record for cisco.local. Here's the response. Here is the response for quad A, IPv6. And then the last one is the response. So this guy right here is our initial query. So in the packet pane, we want to go ahead and explore the Ethernet 2, IPv4, and our datagram. Meaning down here, with your packet selected, we can see the frame details. Ethernet 2 details, the packet details, the UDP section or, or segment or datagram actually, and then we can see the DNS query. So from here, let's go ahead and answer some questions. What are the source and destination MAC addresses which the interface has interacted with. So again, we're looking at our query. We're going to expand out Ethernet to destination MAC is 005056 EA 62 C5. This will probably be different on your device because these are local addresses and that's going to be something that my computer has. Your machine may be slightly different. Source MAC address, that's my MAC address, that's the destination MAC address of my gateway. So from that, the next question is, expand the IPv4, what's the source and destination IP address? So looking at IPv4, scrolling down, source address is the IP address of my computer. Destination IP is my gateway address. And again, that may be slightly different than your computer. Next section is about the datagram, layer four data. It wants to know the source port and destination port. Source port is a randomized port from my machine. Mine happened to be 62,807. Destination is a standard port, happens to be port 53. Well, we know it's protocol for DNS, so that was the expectation. So we want to determine the IP and MAC address of the PC. How can we do that? Well, we can do it through the command terminal, or we can look at the network settings. Go to adapter options, details. Here's our MAC address, here's our IP address, here is our gateway address. You can use the ARP TAC A command in the command terminal to get the same details if you really wanted to. It kind of just depends on how you wanted to do that. I'm going to go ahead and maximize my Wireshark again. The next question is specifically about the query. So expand the flag section of the query. 
So here are the flags. Observe the results. The flag is set to in the address. So these are the flags. So what does it mean? Well, it means that there's a recursion that wasn't a recursive lookup. The recursion was desired. There is a response. There's an opcode. And realistically, most of that means nothing to, to most people. They do not understand all of the flags in DNS. So the response to that was probably go look at the flags for DNS querying so that you can understand what those flags actually mean. So with that said, we can move on to part three, exploring the DNS response traffic. All right, so in that regard, we're gonna choose the response query. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna go ahead in the response, look at the MAC address. Here's our source. Here's our destination, MAC address. Uh, can the DNS server do recursive queries? Yes, the DNS can handle recursive queries. The next one is observe the C name and A name, if that's possible. So for that, we're gonna go ahead and drill down to our response. Here's our response. Here's the authority uh, server. Here is the recursion available. Here's where it says it cannot do the query. So again, the results kind of may be different than yours based off of what you select. All right, so that takes care of the end of this lab. We have two reflection questions. From Wireshark results, what else can you learn about the network? What uh, can you... Uh, filter and realistically without the filtering the results are going to display everything DHCP, ARP, any other network traffic so filtering allows us to narrow down the scope. How can an attacker use Wireshark to compromise the network? Well if the attacker is on the network on the LAN they can observe traffic and that means they can get sensitive information from the details of each packet or anything that's not encrypted. So there are a lot of things that an attacker can do to compromise the network. All right, so again, this was Lab 1717, Exploring DNS Traffic. That's all for this lab. This was very simple. Don't worry, we have a lot more in-depth Wireshark-based labs in this course. Questions or concerns, reach out. All right, so that does it for this lab video. A few suggestions would be one, run through the lab a second time, trying to do it by yourself. Two, I would do a summary of kind of what you learned, where you struggled, and keep that type of journal going so that you can build off of it. Third, and finally, take time to reflect. These labs start off fairly easy and then they grow in complexity, so some of the labs you may have to redo a few times to fully grasp what's going on. If you have any questions or any concerns, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.